Hey guys, and welcome to a scrap of Titans. I'm a rubber duck of war playing under the guise here of the blind bandit, but bringing my favourite lizardmen to the battlefield with a rather interesting twist on my usual lizardmen forces up against the dwarfs of Logic, the mighty YouTuber himself. Should be a good fun fight all round. We've gone for something very different. Now, this was actually taken from a live stream I performed in. I believe it was my own live stream when I was covered in point of view battles and so forth. And this was game two up against Logic. And I thought I would try something a little bit wild and fun. And we have gone for the triple Razor hunting pack build. So one, two, and three. The one on the far side is indeed the Max and Barbs, which are the Regiment of Renowned Hunting Pack. So, why do you bring Razedons instead of Salamanders? Well, they both perform pretty different jobs, despite being relatively similar units. Salamanders are far better against units which lack armour or large targets in general, whereas the Razedons have those armour-piercing bolts and spikes to hurl at the enemy with a vengeance. And up against the Dwarfs, they are incredibly risky, due to the fact they are... Very, 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 very squishy and uh, don't have the most range, so Thunderers, Cannons can really rip them to shreds. But if you can take away those key elements of your opponent's build, Razorons have a great time because of that armour piercing. If we go down here and have a little bit of a look. 112 missile damage, 24 armor piercing missile. It's uh, pretty crazy stuff throughout. To help get these guys to the front line without being uh, just hit by a torrent of bullets, thunder of fire, and cannonballs, we have a load of pterodons. So two up in the skies over our own formation, and two in the distance in a vanguarded position. Their job today is just to hound and harass the enemy thunderers where possible. Our main battle line is going to be pretty standard. A mixture of red crested skinkies and Saurus Warriors of Shields dotted all the way along, including the Regiment of Renown. Looking to bring the pain to the enemy, wrap around their formation and break the backbone of any good Dowie formation in a good old juicy grind fight. Leading the force today is a Salan Mage Priest. He's coming with Tempest in case there is any Gyrocopter nuisance. Uh, unfortunately, there are no Gyrocopters for us to bring to bear, but we do have Apotheosis for some nice healing, and likewise, Soul Quench, a magic missile which can be used much like Amber Spear to go down the line of Dai formations. As you can see, the Salan is going for the world's slowest flanking maneuver. If we can get around the slide and shoot down with a Soul Quench, it can destroy units in seconds. For my opponent's build, a nice solid defensive formation, which can also be turned to go quite aggressive if it needs to. On the flanks, we have Dwarf Warriors with great weapons, and in the centre, basic Dwarf Warriors. A couple of miners just behind them. They are going to be uh, kind of launching those blast charges up and over the front line into the enemy, ensuring they can use all of their volleys where possible. We have a load of long bids in the back lines, as well as on the flanks. Long bids very good at grinding at their fight against uh, requisite Skinks and Saurus. They just have so much durability. And then one, two, three, four Thunderers in a nice juicy squishy center with the hardened shell around and you can kind of see what logic's going for here Loaded defensive bodies to chuck in the way, you let the Thunderers dish out the pain back. We have one unit of Slayers to help protect, and we of course have Foric Ironbrow coming in on his anvil, as he not always should be, but for the majority of battles, this is how you're going to see him. He is coming in with, of course, the Rune of Doom, Rune of Speed, and Rune of Slowness. Now, a lot of the runes actually have pretty good application, but these runes are the most common. Slowing down the enemy, speeding up your troops, it's all stuff which the Dwarves absolutely love. We have a Master Engineer with Flash Bomb as well as Replenishment, probably going to be looking to give it to the Miners to help finish off more Skinks in the later stages of the game. So we're going to be advancing, we are bursting forth from the trees and bounding across the battlefield like happy doggos, with our Razor Dons moving down the flanks, keeping one in deep reserve, waiting for the later stages of the game when we can peel off out of the woods and start engaging the enemy. You can see Logic is focusing on those Pterodon Riders and they're relatively squishy themselves. We're having to be quite careful, just bait, swoop in, try and get the drop on my opponent and at the same time not take too much early damage back because when the front line engages, that's the perfect time to jump on top of those Thunderers as all havoc will indeed break loose. Poor little Pterodons are being forced back at the moment. No dead models yet. And their rock drops can do a real good number on Thunderers in general. And our main battle line is going to be advanced now. Red Crested Skinks kind of taking a forefront approach. My opponent trying to pull me back more and more. Desperate to not get surrounded by it. I think it is only a matter of time. You can see our Red Crested Skinks making good work around the flanks for now. And the Red and Maxim Barbs as well are starting to come into range. Thunderers open up a nice volley onto the Pterodons, not connecting super well, we are able to pull back away from the worst of the damage, but now the Thunderers are starting to get distracted a little bit by the Saurus Warriors in the front, and just the swarm of scaly skin which is soon to be washing over them. So this is our time, Razor Hunter Packs have hopped into the trees, and are going to start unleashing some shots from the flanks. They're uh, fine, they're a little bit obstructed I suppose by the trees, but they should be able to shoot down the rear here of these long beards, or into their flank and do some pretty decent damage. 
Thunders have turned to engage here into Red Cross and Skinks. And we continue to wrap around. And the front lines have now well and truly got underway. With the Saurus Warriors beaten against the steel wall of Dwarf Warriors. Luckily for us, the Solar Mage Priest has managed to find himself in a lovely flanking position. And we beam a Soul Quench down the line. Searing its way through the Thunders. Annihilating them down to just 19 models. That is a dead unit which is going to be running for its life. Pterodons get hit by a run of slowness. But that's absolutely fine. We have more Pterodons starting to pour in from all angles and the Saurus are struggling though up against the Dwarf Warriors due to the, uh, the effect of those blasting charges in the front. Now my opponent did make a little mistake here. He peeled off with some Thunderers to try to get to grips with the raids on the hunting packs and we've BAM! Instantly snapped up that opportunity. Going to be coming down with the Pterodons, Saurus and Red Crested just to finish off this unit and drive them off away from the battlefield because the Thunderers are the main threat to our force due to their ability to counter the Razodons. Razons are now doing some nice damage to the Thunderers, as well as us getting some lovely little rock drops down, trying to get these guys off the field. They are relatively stalled as all Dowie are. More rocks coming down on the Thunderers here in the back. Front line's going pretty poorly. Saurus Wards are doing okay, at least some of them are. Um, and we've got a lot of troops who are currently running for their lives. And now that the Thunderers are basically dealt with, we spring at that last unit of Razons to the main battlefield and fight. Only one Thunderer is alive, but it's in a relatively decent position right now, surrounded by friends. And we are starting to get ground down a little bit. Razons doing some lovely little Kobe's into the enemy, aiming at these longbeards. Red Crested Skinks and Saurus Warriors are slowly grinding their way through the formation. We need to be pushing forward a little bit more aggressively with the Red Crested Skinks here. Try to get them on top of the Slayers to counter them because Slayers are relatively swift and can be a big pain in our butt. Restock goes down on the Thunderers. They are now at max ammunition once more, unleashing shot after shot into the Pterodons, who are currently getting protected by the shield of the old ones. I'm trying my best to whittle them down, but it's uh, they're being pretty tanky, which is uh, not too good for me. Longbeards are chasing away the Slan Mage Priest, who's simply bouncing around, trying to chase off units and be a general nuisance. And we can kite the Longbeards. That's not something that's so useful about hunting packs. Yes, they lack range, but they make up for it in the fact they're relatively swift, at least most of the time. So a lot of shots are being shot now into the rear of the Longbeards and annihilating them. One poor little Razodon has actually... Maybe I say poor Razodon, he's actually ripping and tearing a load of dwarf heads from their shoulders. Doing some nice work there, just snapping where possible. Slam Mage Priest is uh, having a good time as well. Surrounded by Longbeards at the moment. He won't be able to do much damage to them, but hey, at least it's distracting them where possible. Code of Sotek has found themselves on top of the key target, which is the Slayers, as well as these Miners Pterodons. Try to assist in taking down the Slayers as well as those Thunderers, but these Thunderers, I'm sure they're going to get some pretty insane damage value. Luckily for us, the Reserve Razons have been brought in and are shooting down the side with another Soul Quench coming in, plus the pressure from the Terrans. There's so much range you can bring for the Lizardmen. They're kind of a really good close quarters shooty, uh, kind of like a shotgun faction, I suppose. Thunderers have been dealt with at last. That's going to be opening up all our Razodons just to free flyer because the Slayers are basically done with right now. There's not too much which can actually catch our forces. Slime Mage Priest got a little bit too over aggressive, I think, being surrounded by the Longbeards as overestimating our combat prowess. We do pop an Apotheosis to try to stabilize ourselves, plus a lovely banishment goes down on the Longbeards. It's going to do some nice damage, plus we have, of course, a Maxim Barbs nearby and some Pterodon Riders. In the back, the uh, Curve Sotek are trying their little hardest here to drag down the enemy. The Razor Hunter Packs have been focused on Forrick quite a bit. Likewise are the Amaxim Barbs right now, and he is taking some absurd damage. He's one of those lords who is very, very tanky. Rune of Doom does go down, but now we have two Razor Hunter Packs focusing him down. Third one will be getting in there as well in a second, but the Master Engineer is constantly eyeing his sights on that Slan Boutte, trying to force him off. But yeah, another Apotheosis should keep us nice and healthy here. You can see the Pterodons do bomb, uh, bomb dive onto some Dwarf Warriors just to break them up. And now we're going to be pulling back the Maxim Barbs to help deal with these Longbeards and stop them from assassinating our Lord because that would be a really terrible situation for us. Red Crescent Skinks just doing their good jobs here of hunting down the Thunderers, forcing them away from the battlefield where possible. And the Razodons unleash a torrent of spiky balls and needles into Forrick and down the mighty Dwarf Warrior goes. It's a sad day to see him kind of in the dirt there face down and uh, crying I'm sure to his gods but shall they answer the old ones doubt it. Razor Hunter Pack's doing some lovely damage still applying that good long range pressure. Source Warriors cleaving their way through the long bits down on the flank doing a decent job all round there. It has been a bit of a grind for them here today. Raised on is very close to getting caught. In fact, they do get one or two bonks on the head from those great axes. So we're going to be pulling away, kiting back the enemy. There's no need for us to take those type of engagements. Terrons are getting a little bit beat up, but still doing a decent job just hounding this poor Slayer here. This is not the way you want to go as a Slayer, just surrounded by flapping bats, smacking you in the face. 
Unfortunately, he does. Oh, no, he doesn't fall. He just gets knocked down. He gets up again. And that we're never going to be able to keep him down. Uh, and just as I say that, he gets knocked down once more. I'm at some barbs. I've been using combat mode now to chase off the long beards, which is certainly something which, uh, you know, is uh, good news for them. Going to get one, stop my opponent bringing back more forces, push that bounce power more and more in my favor, and save their ammunition for more key stages later in the game. Now that we have managed to assassinate Forrick, all eyes are on the Master Engineer. Surely the Odd Ones goes down a sort of quench, followed up here by some razor on hunting pack shots into the flank and rear of that Master Engineer is certainly going to start to add up. We're also hounding him with our requisite skinks where possible. Longbeards starting to look a little bit isolated and on their own. And with that, the bouncer power is going to swing relatively heavily in our favour right now. We are starting to run uh, pretty low on ammunition. We have four volleys of this unit of Razor Dons. The uh, Maxim Barbs have three volleys left, but we do have a banishment in the back pocket if we need it. And it seems to me like the heart of the Dowie people is crumbling before our eyes. With this unit of Longbeards doing decent up against the source on the left-hand side, Master Engineer has very few friends left as the Razor Dawns come in for a bit of a cheeky afternoon snack and he runs for his cowardly dowie life i know someone who's gonna have to take the slayer oath but well played to my opponent super fun game it was a but a pyrrhic victory but boy oh boy was that a scrap i love getting ma uh, managing to make these raised ones actually work raised ones are a unit which is very very powerful but very niche at the same time takes a bucket ton of micro management and logic certainly is a tough cookie to break down particularly with his dwarf warriors so i'm very happy with how they went today 99 72 49 kills doesn't really tell the full tale of the tape here and the story for these guys because uh, it's their damage value they took down key targets and as you can see 1412 damage value on the max and barbs we have 1200 on this unit of razor dons and 1429 damage value on the third unit Mwah. beautiful work by those guys in the later stages of the game in particular but they still have so much health left and have relatively okay melee stats, not terrible stats. And they could certainly have pounced on some of the weakened Dowie units in the later stages of the game. Once again, well played to Logic. I will delve into the damage dealt and damage value of all of these units in just a second. Do feel free to go check out Logic's channel as well. Fantastic caster, hosts tournaments, does a lot of live streams both on YouTube and on Twitch. If you guys enjoyed this, make sure to leave a big fat juicy thumbs up, subscribe to the channel as well for more Total War Warhammer content going into the future. We drop videos every single day and have streams and all that glorious stuff. Uh, feel free to comment as well, you know, what you thought of the battle, what you think of the spiky doggos, do you love them, do you hate them, what do you think of this matchup in general, or simply yell quack at me, it really is uh, honestly quite heartening watching people, you know, enjoy my content, commenting, saying great game and all that kind of stuff, it really does, uh, yeah, make me make more and more videos and strive to make better videos at the same time. There it is now, an insane number of links down below in the description, you can find my Twitch account there, where I'm going to be streaming, in fact, this Friday, I'm going to be doing, uh, actually that might be the day of the release of this video. So maybe today, who knows? I'm going to be streaming on Twitch over there, doing some Warhammer stuff. Uh, there's links to my Patreon, to my Discord, where you can submit replays to me, get involved in tournaments and events, chat with a lot of cool people. So if you're interested in that kind of stuff, just, you know, you know what to do. Go down there and check it out. So how do we fare apart from the Raised Dons? Raised Dons formed really well. was very happy with them. The Pterodons don't get the most damage value. You can see 400 value, 460, 567, and 345. But they play a pretty damn crucial role in chasing off troops in uh, hunting them down, stopping those thunders as well. And, you know, you're not going to get the most damage if you break a unit, but if you force that unit off the battlefield, it's just as good as killing it. Curl Sotek, a fantastic unit in the majority of matchups, 630 damage value. As for the Saurus, 954, 322, and 614. So a mixed day for the lads, although the unit of 154 kills was probably chewing its way through the Dwarf Warriors and the Miners rather than the long bits. Requisite Skinks for their cost are so good, I love them. Uh, 662 damage value, 92, 429, and 502. So a mixed bag once again, but getting the job done. Slime Mage Priest getting a 1,129 value. Not bad for a more support character. That Soul Quench down the line, just shattering that unit of Thunderers, was a thing of beauty. 104 kills, not shabby whatsoever. As for Logic, I'm actually a big fan of his build all round. I think going cannons can often be a mistake, and actually going a little bit more aggressive with the Thunderers, at least opens up more possibilities for you in case your opponent has gone full kite and they're able to bomb down your cannons and the like. So, for Eyebrow, 20 kills, only 369 damage value, unfortunately. We normally see him perform so well, but what can men do against such reckless bolts blasted into their face? 
892 damage value on the Master Engineer. Very impressive. Him did some good pressure to my Slan. And the uh, Blast and Charge did pretty good. 520 damage value, 400 and 463. Dwarf War is fed a little bit worse. In fact, quite a bit worse. Definitely not paying for themselves. And the Longbeards, likewise, eh, is a, again a bit of a mixed bag. Some of them struggled, some of them did okay. The highlight here been a 700 damage value unit. Only 553 on the Slayers. You expect them to get much more, but it's just the constant pressure from the missiles of the Pterodons and the Razodons eventually drag them down. As for the Thunderers, 464 damage value, 126, 245, and the one unit who survived the longest, 920. If he had kept just one more Thunder unit available and online, saving two instead of just one, he could have quite possibly dragged this game back and clawed out a glorious victory. But alas, that is not the tale we will be telling our children today. No, today the children of the old ones shall be praised and it is a victory for the Dino Boys. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. Until next time, peace, peace. And as always, stay awesome.